So 13. Okay, and we've been talking about uh, BCH codes and how to think of code words of a BCH code, how to try, how to list out all the code words. We know one way of doing it with just the generator matrix and the parity check matrix. Maybe we need a better idea, for, better way of going about it to simplify the implementation and all that. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's that's where we are going. And the last last point I was talking about was this. Uh, was this observation that if, if CFX is a code word of the say the T error correcting BCH code okay and uh, let's say the block length n is 2 power m minus 1 okay all these things I mean I'm hopefully hopefully all these things you'll assume from now on okay so it's it's uh, it's clear that I'm primitive element okay and I was I was talking about how we can we can see that x plus alpha times x plus alpha squared so on till x plus alpha part 2 t is has to divide c of x okay so this is a code word if and only if this is true okay so I was talking about understanding this properly the main confusion was this is a polynomial in f2 power mx Okay, while I want this polynomial to be in F2x, right? So if you think of, okay, I want to draw a picture here to illustrate what is it that we are trying to see, okay? So you want C of x to be a factor of the polynomial here on the left, but you also want it to have binary coefficients. So if you think of this set, okay, the set of all polynomials with coefficients. So this set is, if you picture this set as, as a big circle, okay? So since the binary 0 and 1 are in F2 power m, where will F2x be? It will be inside it. Okay, I know that. Okay, so I can imagine this is my F2x. Okay, now I want to imagine another set here, which is the set of all multiples of this polynomial. Okay, suppose all multiples of. Okay, so maybe I think I called it fx or something. Did I call it fx? Okay, so of this fx, okay, where will that set be in this? Okay, it will be some set here, but it's going to also intersect my f2x. Okay, am I right? So where will this BCH code be in this? It will be this, exactly this. This will be my BCH code. Do you see this? Okay, so this is what we are trying to do. Okay, if you take all multiples of this fx, you will get all these polynomials which are which do not have binary coefficients also. I also want to impose this additional constraint, which means I will I will I will have to look at this intersection. Okay. Eventually, what we will do is in order to get a better description, eventually we will also describe this BCH code as set of all multiples. Okay, when I say all multiples, the degree needs to be a thing. Multiples of some polynomial, some binary <coughs> polynomial. Okay, eventually we'll get there. We'll get there. We will see this. Even this intersection is the set of all multiples of some binary polynomial. Okay, so to go from all multiples of f x to all multiples of a binary polynomial, you need this notion of minimal polynomial. Okay, so you see that's the bridge between uh, polynomial with coefficients from f2 power m and polynomials with coefficients from f2 okay so there was a question just before this lecture which disturbed me a little bit see you have to be careful when you think of so i've been talking about polynomials in so many contexts okay when i introduced finite fields i talked about polynomials of degree less than or equal to m minus 1 and addition and multiplication modulo some irreducible polynomial okay Right, so we could think of the finite fields consisting of a set of polynomials. Okay, maybe the polynomial alpha square plus alpha plus one is in the finite field. Okay, now if I think of x squared plus x plus one in f2x, is it the same as the alpha square plus alpha plus one in my finite field? It looks the same, but it behaves very differently, right? Any multiplication I do in f f2x, I don't have to do it modulo anything. I just multiply and I'll be happy. But in my finite field, what am I doing? I'm doing something else. That alpha square plus alpha plus 1 in that finite field is different from 
the x squared plus x plus 1. That's the reason why I shifted from x to alpha when I went to finite, finite fields. I don't want this confusion. Okay, so when I talk about polynomials, don't think of them always as elements of some finite fields. Okay, because you are doing addition and multiplication modulo some other. Okay, addition will not make any difference. Multiplication you are doing modulo some irreducible polynomial. That once you do that, things behave completely differently. In fact, they have inverses, right? But a general polynomial does not have any inverse. Right? You can't multiply by some other polynomial to get one. Okay. So they, they are completely different things. Okay, don't don't get mixed up between the two. Don't think of one in terms of the other. Okay, when you think of polynomials, they are different. When you think of finite fields, they are different. Okay, keep that in keep that in your mind. Something important. Okay, so let's let's go back to these minimal polynomials. Okay, so let me remind you of what the definition was. Okay, I'll write it. Minimal polynomial of beta in F two M. Okay, least degree polynomial, least degree binary polynomial. Okay, I, I called it f beta x with beta as the root. Right, that was my definition for the minimal polynomial. Okay, so you can go back now and imagine this this set, right? Okay, so what am I? This if you if you look at uh, if you look at uh, if you look at this set f2 mx okay this is my set of all polynomials with coefficients from f2 f2 power m there will be one polynomial which is x plus beta okay what is the set of all polynomials which have beta as a root all multiples of x plus beta is that clear okay all multiples of x plus beta are Set of all polynomials with beta as a root in f2 to power m x. Okay, so I'll have that set. Okay, so this will be set of all multiples of x plus beta. In fact, this is the same as set of all polynomials which have beta as a root in what in f2 to power m x. there is no problem here so suppose if i were to ask what is the least degree polynomial with beta as a root what is the answer x plus beta okay immediately you can get that there's no problem but what am i saying next i'm saying i don't want this i want in the intersection of this guy and f2x okay there will be some non trivial intersection what is the least degree polynomial in that that is my f beta x okay So you have to do some additional work to get there. Okay, so it's the same picture. You have to keep this picture in mind when you think of polynomials over multiple fields. Coefficients have to come from here and there. This is the picture to keep in mind. Okay, all right. Is that clear? So it turns out finding f beta of x is very trivial. Okay, it's very easy. There's a formula which you can directly substitute and find. Okay, so the observation there is: suppose I have f beta of x to be, okay, some. Uh, Oh, some let's say I don't know f0 plus f1x plus so on till let's say fr x to the power r. Okay, suppose I say f beta of x is this. Okay, what do I know? Beta is the root of f beta of x. Okay, and all these f0 to fr are what binary coefficients, right? So there are a few simple results you can derive. For instance, this polynomial cannot be reducible. Okay, what will happen if it is reducible? you can write it as a product of two other polynomials of lower degree and beta has to be root of one of them which means immediately you'll have a violation of the minimality of the degree there was some other polynomial of lesser degree so it's irreducible right so all these things you can easily prove these are all properties and there are other properties which you can prove but at the key property is once beta is a root and polynomials have binary co this polynomial has binary coefficient what else should be a root okay we know something beta square has to be a root right right once once beta gives you zero when substituted here i can happily square it i know beta square will also be a root then what else will be a root beta power 4 beta power 8 so on so just because beta was the root of this polynomial and just because it has binary coefficients you know immediately beta square has to be a root beta power 4 has to be a root beta power 8 so on okay so how far can you go you can't keep on repeating that and going on forever no eventually you will fold back okay so see what happens okay so beta is a root 
of f beta of x. Okay, so that implies what else is a root? Beta square is a root. Beta power 4 is a root. Beta power 8 is a root. What will happen? Eventually, when you keep on going, you will get beta power 2 power m minus 1. Okay, the m minus 1 is here. It's not 2 power m minus 1. You see the difference, right? 2 power m minus 1. Minus 1 totally goes into it. What will be the next power? Beta power 2 power m. Okay, but you know what that is? What is beta power 2 power m? It's equal to beta, right? Notice that what is beta power 2 power m? Okay, it is beta times beta power 2 power m minus 1. And what do I know about beta power 2 power m minus 1? It will become 1. So this becomes beta and I get a repetition. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. So I have to be careful here. Okay. So it's not that this should be the first place where it repeats. But I know it will be a finite number only. I wrote that down carefully. But it can repeat earlier than 2 power m minus 1 also. We will see some examples. But you know it will eventually repeat. It can't keep on going forever. Okay. It will eventually repeat. And like you rightly pointed out, it can happen before m. Okay. It can happen. Eminently it can happen before m. Okay. So we will see some examples to see how this repetition happens. But I know since beta is a root, all powers of beta raise to all all two power i mean okay not all powers of beta only beta beta square beta power 4 so on okay so those powers should be powers of 2 by themselves okay so in anything if you raise it to the power of 2 it should also be a, a root of f beta of x okay so let's see this in an example let's take the primitive element alpha and f8 okay Okay, if you take the primitive element, okay, let's try to find its, uh, suppose f alpha of x is the minimal polynomial. Okay, suppose that is there. You know alpha is the root, then what? Alpha square is the root, and then alpha pa 4 is the root, and then That's it. Okay, these are these are also roots or roots of f alpha of x. Okay, there could be other roots. I don't know. I know just because alpha was a root, these three are, these two other also are roots. Okay, there could be other roots, but I don't know. Okay. Okay, so this is how this works. Okay, this is the first example. Second example I want to take is I'll start with alpha belonging to f16, which is primitive. Then I will take beta to be, what shall we take it to be? We will take it to be alpha power 5. Okay. Okay. We will take beta to be alpha power 5. Okay. And then I want to look at f beta of x. Okay. I want to look at roots of f beta of x. Okay. Beta is a root. And what else is a root? Beta square is a root. What happens when you raise beta to the power 4? you come back to beta. Okay, So, you can only find beta and beta square as roots. You see that? Right? When you raise beta square to the power 2 again, you get beta power 4 which is alpha power 20 which comes back to alpha power 5. Okay? Is that clear? So, only beta and beta square we are able to find. You can do other examples. So, let's, let's do a slightly fancy looking example. We will go to F2, 256. Primitive. And I'll look at. We'll first see f alpha x. Okay, what are its roots? We can say alpha, alpha squared, alpha power four, alpha power eight, alpha power sixteen, alpha power thirty-two, alpha power sixty-four, alpha power one twenty-eight. You know, for the primitive element, you will get all the m terms, right? For the primitive element, you have to get because you know the primitive element has got order equals. 2 power m minus 1. So, for the primitive element, you will get everything. But if the element is not primitive, then if the order is less than 2 power m minus 1, then something else can happen. Okay. So, if you try, for instance, if you take beta to be, what shall we take? Let's take. No, okay. no I am not claiming anything like that. Okay. There could be other roots. Okay. So, let me, if, if you want to be very specific, the, let me write that down. There could be other roots at this point. Eventually, we will show that there are no other roots. Okay. But there could be other roots. At this point, there could be other roots. Okay, 
but we will show i mean the next step i'm going to show there are no other rules so once you know that it's very easy so so i said finding minimal polynomials is very easy in, in finite fields okay so if you take for instance uh, what shall we take i want a nice uh, let's take alpha power 50 51 no yeah 51 okay i hope this will give me the answer i want yeah 51 will start with. okay f beta of x what can we conclude okay you'll have beta right then beta squared which is what alpha pa 102 okay and then beta pa 4 which is what Two hundred and four. Okay, so alpha pa two fifty five is one. Okay, then next what? Do you get beta pa eight? One fifty three. Okay, will you get beta pa sixteen? What's beta pa sixteen? Fifty one is seventeen times three. Two fifty five is seventeen times fifteen. Okay, so it will come back. Okay, beta plus sixteen will become beta again. Okay, so you see, you get only four different roots in this case. Okay, okay. Well, there could be other roots, as I said at this point, but we'll eventually see that there are no other roots. But there could be other roots. Likewise, you can see some interesting examples. Another example is alpha bar eighty-five. Okay, so if you do Let's say beta one. Okay, then if you want to do beta one x, you see beta, beta square. That's it. Okay, beta power four will become beta again. Okay, eighty five is seventeen times five, and two fifty five is seventeen times fifteen. So when you raise it to the power four, it will come back to beta. Okay, so so different kind of things like this can happen, but but we know already that these have to be roots. There are there is no choice. Those have to be roots just because the polynomial had binary coefficient okay so in general what can i say if i have if i have if i have if i want a general now if generalize now in general okay how many how many uh, roots can we say it will have if you have a beta beta belonging to f2 power m okay okay in f beta of x okay you could have could have roots of f beta of x being beta beta squared Okay, right. So until let's suppose some beta to the power two power r. Okay, so maybe the next one became beta again. Okay, so what am I saying when that happens? So beta power two power r plus one is what? Equal to equal to beta again. Okay, so actually maybe I'll take r minus one here. I'm sorry. Apologize for this. I'll take r minus one and r here. It's the same. Okay, beta power two power r. Okay, so you can show. So, so looking at this very closely, you get beta power two power r minus one equals one. Okay, so this can happen. The smallest r for which this will happen, two power r minus one will have to divide. Okay, so this is some careful number theory here. It's not very, it's not very difficult, but one needs to think about it. There's some proof here. Okay, two power r minus one will have to divide two power M minus one, okay. Only then this can happen, okay. It's almost like the order of beta is two power r minus one, right? I mean, it's not really the order, but you know, you see what I mean, okay. This can only happen if this is this is this is true. From here, you can even conclude r will have to divide m, okay. So two power r minus one will divide two power m minus one only when r divides. M. Otherwise, it won't divide. Okay, you can prove these things, but 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 this is an useful fact, okay. So this can happen only when r divides m, okay. So let's keep that aside. I have not proved it, but that's that's something you can look up for proof. No, it's not very difficult to prove. This. Okay, all right. So my claim now is going to be this f beta of x is equal to x plus beta. Okay, this is our claim. X plus beta squared. So on till x plus beta par two par r minus one. That's my claim. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, that's my claim. So you know the this polynomial, right, has to divide f beta of x. That we know, right, because all those things are roots of f beta of x. So that polynomial has to divide. Uh, that's why I kept saying there could be other roots, there could be other roots, maybe there could be other other polynomials, irreducible factors. What I'm claiming here is there is no such thing. Just multiply all these things, you get f beta of x. Okay. So the way there's a proper way of proving it, but I'll just give you a simple intuitive argument for why it should be true. I think that's it's a reasonably good proof also. The what what I'm going to give you, but there is a proper way of proving it. So what do I need to prove now to show that this is the this is equal to the minimal polynomial? Exactly. Do you see that? If once I show all coefficients here are binary, then I'm done. Okay. All I need to show that this is the minimal polynomial is that. On the right hand side here, x plus beta times x plus beta square, so on till x plus beta to the power 2 power r minus 1, all coefficients are binary. That's the only thing I have to show. Do you see that? Once I get that all coefficients are binary, that has to be the minimal polynomial, right? This polynomial has to divide it and all coefficients are binary. So it has to be the minimal polynomial. Okay, so that's the proof that you need to show. Okay. So so the way to show that is how do I show any number is binary? Okay, so what do I know in general? In general, this polynomial can belong to in general, it could have coefficients from coefficients from which field? From where? F2 par m, right? Beta belongs to F2 par m. It could have coefficients from F2 par m, right? It multi multiply sums and products from F2 par m, right? But what I'm actually saying is, if you do all that, you will only get binary coefficients. It's a very surprising result. It doesn't look like very directly follows from there, right? Right? But it's a very surprising result that it has to be binary. Okay, okay, is that clear? So, so to show this, the trick is, okay, we'll first prove it and then see a whole bunch of examples. Okay, the trick in showing this is, suppose I give you an arbitrary element of f2 par m, okay, some beta. How will you check if it's binary or not? What is the check? If it's the inverse of itself, okay. Well, that's a good way. Another way of putting it is, if you square it, what should you get? It is the inverse of itself. Yeah, but if you square it, what should you get? You should get the same. Okay, but I don't know if it's the inverse of itself. I think that's not the. Is that the logic? Yeah, for zero, then you can't use that logic, right? So the best check is if you square it, you should get the same thing. Okay, only for zero and one that will happen, right? Beta square will be beta only if beta is 0 or 1. Just beta bring beta to the other side, factor beta out, you'll see beta is 0 or 1. You can't get anything else. Okay. So beta square equals beta is the check. Okay. So that's the same trick here. I will show if when you expand this and simplify, each coefficient when squared will give you the same answer. Okay. So I'll give you a kind of a loose argument. It's not a proper way of doing it. The proper way of doing it is you can find it in the books. Okay. This is a nice way of doing it also. Okay. Suppose x plus beta, okay, so here's the sketch of the proof for the claim, x plus beta squared, so on till x plus beta power 2 power r minus 1 equals, say, some f0 plus f1x plus, what will be the degree? Count, count carefully, man. Let me think. Should be r, okay. So fr x to the power r. In fact, fr can be will be one. Okay, right? Why is it r? See, you're going from two power zero, two power one, all the way to two power r minus one. That's why I adjusted this r minus one to r. Okay, I wanted to get wanted to get degree r. Okay, so you get this. So what will happen if I square both sides? Okay, here what will I get? If I square both sides, I'll get f1 squared x squared plus so on till fr squared x squared to the power r. Okay, this is what I get. On this side, what will I get? Okay, let's let's square term by term. I'm going to get x squared plus beta squared so on till what? Right? You know, I'm, I'm sorry. If I square this, what will I get? x squared x squared plus beta squared. If I square this, I'll get x squared plus beta square. Do you see this? What, I, what I'm saying? I'm going to square the whole thing, which is squaring term by term. So if I square x plus beta, what do I get? x squared plus beta squared. What will be the square of x plus beta squared? 
x squared plus beta power 4. Okay, so until what is the square of this? x squared plus beta to the power 2 power r which is the same as beta. Okay, beta to the power 2 power r is beta. Okay, so look at these two polynomials. Are they the same or different? They are the same except that I have replaced x with x squared. And if I multiply and simplify, what will I get? Okay, what has happened here? These two polynomials, x goes to x squared, that's all. Other than that, it's the same, which means I can replace here each x with x squared and I would get the same thing. Okay, I'm sorry. What happened? I think something happened here. Okay, all right. Right? So, this guy is the same as f0 plus f1 x squared plus f2 x squared squared plus so on till fr x squared to the power r is equal to f0 squared plus f1 squared x squared so on till fr squared x squared to the power r. Do you see that? So now if you compare term by term, since this is equal always, you can compare term by term and see fi square will have to be equal to fi which means all the coefficients are binary. Okay, so it is a little bit of a trickery to see how these terms occurred. If you are not very happy with this proof, I can tell you that there are other better proofs which just directly look at expressions for the coefficients and do it. Okay, Did you have a question about this proof? Yeah, yeah, fr will be 1. Yeah. It is okay, you can just keep it like that. Oh, look at the left hand side expression. Coefficient of x bar r is 1. Okay, so that is my proof and uh, th there is a better proof using symmetric polynomials and proper arguments, but this is also a good enough proof. I do not know. I am happy with this proof when I see it. Okay, <laughs> maybe, maybe people will not be very happy. Okay, so let us see a whole bunch of examples to convince ourselves that this will indeed work the way we want it to work. Okay, so, so I think, uh, okay, so in all these things we will need F8, okay. And uh, let's let's just do. I think F8 and F16 will need. It's going to be difficult for me to produce F16 here. So maybe I'll. I'll I think I have it in one of my previous lectures. No, I should probably put it in permanent memory so that I can pull it back whenever I want. Okay. So let's let's quickly write down F16. Okay. So I'm going to write down F16 as 0, 1, alpha, alpha squared, so on till alpha power 14. I will say alpha power 15 is 1 and then alpha power 4 is 1 plus alpha. Okay, if I do this, let me write down the table for uh, let us say alpha power 3, alpha squared, alpha 1. Okay, and 0 is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 1 is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. Alpha is going to be 0, 0, 1, 0. Alpha squared is going to be 0, 1, 0, 0. Alpha 3 is going to be 0, 0, 0. 4 is going to be 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, alpha power 5 is going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. Alpha power 6 is going to be 1, 1, 0, 0. Let me know if I'm making a mistake. Alpha power 7 is going to be 1, 0, 1, 1. Am I right? Alpha power 8 is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. Alpha power 9 is going to be 1, 0, 1, 0. Alpha power 10 is going to be 0, 1, 1, 1. Alpha power 11 is going to be 1, 1, 1, 0. Alpha power 12 is going to be. What do we get? 1, 1, 1, 1. Yeah, right. Alpha power 13 is going to be 1, 1. 0, 1, okay, alpha power 14 is going to be 1, 0, 0, 1. There you go. I think I have, let me just commit this to memory here. Copy. Okay. Alright, so that's my F16. I want to take F8, but F8 is so simple that you might be able to do that in, in a flash. Okay, so I want to do F16. 
I want you to go ahead and compute f alpha x. Okay, it's some work, but I want you to do it. Okay. Let's do f alpha x first. What's the formula for f alpha x? If, right, first thing you have to figure out is the list of roots starting from alpha. Alpha, alpha square, alpha power 4 and alpha power 8. Okay, and then you do this x plus alpha times x plus alpha square times x plus alpha power 4 times x plus alpha power 8. Okay, so if you simplify, you should get a binary polynomial which is the minimal polynomial of alpha. Okay, so this is worth doing. Spend your spend a couple of minutes. Okay, first best way of doing it is to first multiply these two guys. Okay, you'll get x squared plus what is alpha plus alpha squared? This is alpha power 5. Okay, and then alpha power 3. Then x squared plus alpha power 4 plus alpha power 8 give you 0, 1, 1, 0, which is alpha power 5 again. Is that right? Let me know if I'm making a mistake. Yeah. Okay. So then now we go ahead and do this entire computation. Okay, so we'll get x power 3 term to vanish, and x square will also vanish. We'll get the x term and we'll get 1. Right? The constant term is 1, everything worked out perfectly. Okay, is it surprising that the minimal polynomial of alpha turned out to be x power 4 plus x plus 1? How many of you are surprised and how many of you are not surprised? Okay. So look at that, look at the primitive polynomial with which we started. Okay, x power 4 plus x plus 1. And we said alpha is going to be a root of that primitive polynomial, right? Alpha is something which satisfies that primitive polynomial. Alpha power 4 plus alpha plus 1 is 0. So obviously, if you go back and compute the minimal polynomial of alpha, you should get x power 4 plus x plus 1. If you didn't get it, then something was wrong, okay? So you see, this will be very easy. For alpha, it's very easy, okay? What about the minimal polynomial of alpha squared? Let me see who's going to give me the smartest answer. Oh, you don't have to do the computation. It should be the same as this. Why? Alpha is the root of that and alpha square is also a root of that and it's an irreducible polynomial. It will be the it will be also the same thing. What about alpha power 4? Okay, I've already put an equality. Okay, so all these guys will be the same as what you already calculated. So you see finding all these guys will be equal to this. Okay, it will be equal to f alpha x. Okay, you can find minimal polynomials by the dozens, okay, not by the dozens, by four at a time kind of. You know, you find one, you found four. Okay, everything else comes for free. Okay, so you don't have to redo the same computation. Okay, so what's the next thing which is which we have which we should try and find? Alpha part three. Okay, go ahead and find it. Okay, so you should have got x plus alpha power 3, x plus alpha power 6, x plus alpha power 12, and then x plus alpha power 9, right? Okay, go ahead and multiply, simplify.
okay so you should get x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x squared plus x plus 1 okay so you should get this okay okay so i mean don't waste your time now doing it but you will get it eventually okay so you will get x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x squared plus x plus 1 what's the next thing that i should try and find What's the question? No, no, what's your doubt, please? Yeah, it has to be irreducible. Yeah. How this polynomial became irreducible? Yeah, yeah. Has to be. Don't worry about that. Okay, so next next thing we have to find, okay, so alpha power 6 and 12 and 9 have already come for you. Next thing to find is alpha power 5. Okay, so you'll see if you do this, it will be alpha power 5 and then alpha power 10. Okay, the next thing would repeat and this will simplify as x squared plus x plus 1. Okay. Okay. The next thing to find is alpha power seven. Okay. This will work out as x plus alpha power seven. Okay. I've I've done this for a long time in my life, so I know all this by heart. Okay. So if you're wondering how is it that I'm getting all this so fast, it's because I know many of these things by heart. Okay. So x power four plus x power three plus one. Okay. So there's lots of questions you can ask about the. I'm sorry. I have to find? No, 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 no. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can get some interplace possibly. So those are the those are the only things. After this, you can stop because there'll be no other element for which you have to find minimal polynomials. Everything is already there. Okay. So 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 there are lots of interesting things you notice, right? So for instance, one one point I made. Once you have an irreducible polynomial. If you reverse the coefficients, right, order of the coefficients, you again get another irreducible polynomial, right? So x power 4 plus x plus 1 was irreducible, and x power 4 plus x power 3 plus 1 is also irreducible. Notice alpha is a root there, and alpha power 14 is a root here, and you'll see the inverse roots will hold, okay? Alpha square is a root there, alpha power 13 is a root there, alpha power 4 is a root there, alpha power 11 is a root there, okay? It's all interesting, the interplay between these things. So one, one can argue you don't even have to do this computation for alpha plus 7. Just by noticing that it's the inverse of that, you'll know what this is. You can easily write down. Okay? So there are lots of interesting things like this which can, which will end up in quiz problems for instance. You know? So <laughs> if you don't have enough practice, you might be confused by these things. Okay? There are lots of interesting properties in this computation with, which can help you avoid a lot of drudgery and work. Okay? So there are a lot of... Uh, lot of deep results concerning minimal polynomials which we absolutely won't have any time to prove but I'll state it okay one of the things you can show which is very surprising is if you do this for f2 power m okay if you go ahead and find all the minimal polynomials of all elements of f2 power m you will get all binary irreducible polynomials of degree r that divide m okay okay surprising okay so you do this f2 power m do minimal polynomials for each of these elements like this, okay, you will get all the binary irreducible polynomials whose degree divides m. Okay, for instance, here what is m? 4. So I should get all binary irreducible polynomials of degree 1, 2, and 4. Okay, how will I get degree 1 and 2? I should have done f0 and f1. If I had done f0, I would get x. Then for f1, I would have got x plus 1. Okay, so I didn't do that. F0, x is what? x itself, and then f1 x is x plus 1 okay these two are very trivial one doesn't have to do any problems okay what about degree 2 i should get all irreducible polynomials of degree 2 you see x squared plus x plus 1 shows up okay and i will get all irreducible binary polynomials of degree 4 okay those are the three okay so it's a fabulous result okay so you don't have to worry too much I'm sorry you show that using properties <laughs> It's okay. I don't want to get into the proof. Okay, it, it, if you want proof for all these things, there's a book on finite fields and applications by Lydell and Niederreiter. Okay, L-I-D-L. Okay, that's the name of the first author. Take a look at that book. That book has lots of proofs. Finite fields and applications. Okay, so 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 that's about minimal polynomials. Okay, so let's now go back to our. I can I, I can do this for other fields also. Okay, so let's do it for other fields without having this table with us. Okay, so let's do one more example. It's pretty interesting. Suppose I now say I want to do this for let's say f64, okay, right? I don't know what this field is. Maybe I don't even know what the minimal polynomial is. Okay, so it's okay. But you'll see you can get amazing amount of information about 
what the minimal polynomial is without even knowing anything about the field okay it's just mere arithmetic with 2 and 4 and all that you'll see this is alpha is just a placeholder okay you can do everything with the exponent it's it's, it's nothing there about alpha which uh, stopped you anywhere okay so what do i know alpha plus 63 is 1 okay and i know alpha plus 6 is something okay i don't even have to know that okay i don't even have to know that you'll see i can get a lot of information about the minimal polynomials okay so what will be if i want to worry about f alpha x okay what will it be okay x plus alpha times x plus alpha squared times so on till x plus alpha to the power 32 right it will have degree what degree 6 okay so 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 what i can do is i'm just repeating this x plus x plus and brackets i mean they don't have any meaning okay what really matters is what the roots what are the roots of f alpha of x okay so maybe we write alpha and then roots of f alpha of x here okay maybe we just do that okay so 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 if i want to do that if i have alpha then it would be alpha alpha squared alpha power 4 alpha power 8 alpha power 16 and alpha power 32 okay this contains essentially the same information as the above top line right if i have to find f alpha of x what will i do i'll do x plus alpha and then multiply i don't care okay the next thing the next thing i have to worry about is what alpha power 3 right i don't have to worry about alpha squared okay because i know already what its minimal polynomial roots will be okay so i'll do alpha power 3 what will i get okay we can do it notice the only thing you need is alpha power 63 is 1 okay i can happily keep on doing it okay alpha power 6 alpha power 12 alpha power 24 alpha power 48 then alpha power well 96 96 is the same as 33 okay i can stop there okay then what is the next thing i have to worry about alpha power 5 okay so i would get alpha power 5 alpha power 10 alpha power 20 alpha power 40 alpha power well 60 60 is the same as 17 and then alpha power 34 okay okay do you see that and then what is the next thing i have to worry about alpha power 7 okay so i would get alpha power 7 alpha power 14 alpha power 28 okay then alpha power 56 and then alpha power 112 which is the same as what I believe uh, 49 am i right yeah 49 and then alpha power 98 which is the same as 35 okay so you notice here i'm again repeating this alpha power alpha power it has no meaning okay you see what i mean right i can convey the same information by completely dropping out that alpha Okay, for instance, I can say what is the next power I am interested in? 9. Okay, I can simply write 9. Okay, you know it's alpha power 9. Okay, I can simply write 9. And what will be the powers, what will be the roots of f alpha power 9 x? It will be 9. What else will be there? 18, 36, 72, which is the same as 9. So I can stop there. Okay, so it's enough if I provide this list. I don't have to keep writing this alpha power, alpha power, alpha power. Why am I wasting ink, right? I don't have to do that. Okay, it's enough if I simply write this. What's the next power I, I need to worry about? 10 is there already. 11, right? 11 would be 11, 22, 44, 88 is the same as 25, 50, 100 is the same as 37. Okay? Right? I can keep on doing this. Next thing is 13, I believe. Okay? So, one can keep on doing this. Okay? So, maybe 13 I will do just for fun 26 52 okay 104 is the same as 41 82 is the same as 19 okay and then 38 okay so you see you can keep on doing this it's very easy to get what does this tell me what's the degree of this degree is 3 okay all these guys have degree 6 these two also have degree 6 okay so i can find the degree of the minimal polynomial with absolutely no other information about the field. Okay, I don't need anything else. I can happily find the degree. Okay, you can do this very simple work. Okay, so then 15 is the next thing. Okay, I would get 15, 30, 60. Okay, then what do you get? I'm sorry, 27, huh? 27? No, not 27, I'm sorry. 57, no? 
120 57 and 114 would be 51 am i right and then 102 would be 39 okay is that right yeah so this are degrees i can keep on doing this i don't want to exhaust this list i can keep on doing this okay okay so so okay okay so 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 so, so. So notice, given any power of alpha, how do I find the roots Roots as powers of alpha? I have to take that power of alpha, then multiply it by 2, then multiply by 4, multiply by 8, so on till I get a repetition. Okay. So if you form a set like that, this set is called something like the cyclotomic coset generated by 15. Okay. It's, it's just a technical name. I don't want to get into it. It's, it's called some special name. Okay. So it's some coset generated by that. And there are lots of you can you can study it very closely but the essential idea is those are the roots of the minimal polynomial for alpha power 50 okay one can always do this very very easily okay so the next statement i want to leave you with before we come back and meet next week again is coming back to bch codes so what does all this mean for bch codes let's go back to bch codes okay what is it that we want okay so in bch codes what did we have if c of x is a code word Code word of what? Code word of a of a T error correcting if somebody tells you this is true, then you know this implies this is if and only if what? X plus alpha, X plus alpha squared, so on till what? X plus alpha part 2t divides C of X. Okay, what is alpha now? Alpha is a primitive element in f2 power m okay so you know this is true okay now since you know c of x is binary coefficients you can say a lot more okay so you need you know alpha alpha square to alpha power 2t are all we'll have to divide c of x from here one can show this will happen if and only if lcm of f alpha x f alpha squared x f alpha power 3x so on till f alpha power 2tx divides c of x. Okay. Okay. So it's a very simple. Uh, it's it's easy to make this argument. Okay. So because x plus alpha divides c of x, you know the and c of x has binary coefficients. Okay. One can claim that the minimal polynomial of alpha has to divide c of x okay it's the same argument like i did before you can prove it very easily okay alpha is a root so alpha square is a root alpha power 4 is a root all those things are roots and they don't have any common factors so I multiply them together the minimal polynomial has to divide c of x the same thing i can do for f alpha square why degree, yeah. you find this degree, the remaining one is okay. exactly all right so people have foreseen what's going to happen in the future but anyway but why did i put the lcm there why did i say lcm here why can't i just say the product of all these things yeah, you have only the, so when you say each of those individually divide, only the LCM has to divide, right? Because f alpha of x and f alpha square of x are what? They are the same polynomial. Once you say that divides, you don't, you cannot again include f alpha square of x also. So the LCM of this has to divide c of x, okay? What is so amazing now is, this is a polynomial in what? This belongs to f2 power mx. Where do you think this will belong? f2x. Okay, and we have achieved what we wanted to achieve. Okay. Okay. So that was the that was our key problem, right? You remember that intersection? We had this problem of this polynomial having coefficients from f2 power mx. We have now now used the minimal polynomial idea and moved to a polynomial which has coefficients from f2x. And I know c of x is a code word if and only if that divides. Okay, this polynomial is called the generator polynomial of the BCH code. Okay, so it's usually denoted g of x. Okay. Okay, so look at this powerful statement. C of x belongs to this BCH code if and only if C of x equals 
m of x times g of x okay and what is m of x now m of x is any binary polynomial can i say any binary polynomial what should i say of degree such that what degree of c of x is less than or equal to n minus okay that's the only thing i have to worry about now I'll, i know this g of x i can take all possible binary polynomials m of x so that the product of those two should have degree less so m of x itself should have degree less than or equal to something okay so we'll come back and look at that in the next next week okay but this is what we have achieved okay so this is what we wanted to do and we have achieved that using this idea of minimal polynomials to go from polynomials with coefficient from f2 power m to polynomials with binary coefficient and we achieved the whole thing okay